For the exchange, our next guest says there's a clear line between the Hamas attacks and this rise in anti-Semitism incidents. We're joined now by former Congressman Ted Deutsch, who is now the CEO of the American Jewish Committee. Ted, it is good to see you. Um, just to address this issue that we're seeing on college campuses specifically, and then we can speak to the global spread and rise of anti-Semitism. What do you make of Cornell University canceling classes tomorrow? Uh, you know, we have been calling, as you saw me on air, and I, and I know you've been saying this, that universities need to do more. Is this what you meant by needing to do more? Is this the right step? Well, first, thanks for having me. I, I've been in contact with uh, universities most of this week, and, uh, and there does need to be more. Um, a day off is not the answer. I'm not saying that it's the wrong decision. I mean, there is a lot of stress at Cornell after these really terrible threats uh, that left the student, the Jewish student community very much on edge, the community as a whole very much on edge. So there's a lot of stress. I understand that. And so perhaps this is warranted. But the response uh, that has to come is some moral clarity on campuses and the the recognition that uh, what we're seeing now is is related to Hamas's attack on October 7th. It's an unwillingness to simply call out that terror that's resulted in the slaughter of 1,400 men, women, and children, and thousands injured and hundreds taken hostage, and and so many Americans among the dead and uh, the wounded and the hostages. Uh, that's what's necessary. And as long as universities are willing to tolerate the, the kinds of things that we've heard on too many campuses of people praising what happened on October 7th as some sort of military action that was exhilarating, that brought, that brought great joy to, to their communities, uh, that's, that we're going to continue to see these kinds of threats and worse. So we need university presidents, we need university leaders, just as we need corporate leaders to speak out clearly about what's happening and to condemn anti-Semitism that has resulted in the kinds of threats that we saw at Cornell. Ted Zane here. You know, the past three weeks, just in terms of the staggering rise in anti-Semitism, I mean, it has been a real education for me. It's been a real education. I've talked to you about this, my dear. Like a lot of it has just really opened my eyes just in terms of what is lurking underneath the surface in this society. Last week, a man in Los Angeles broke into the home of a Jewish family, threatened to kill them, basically went on an anti-Semitic rant and threatened, threatened to kill them in their own home. Um, a lot of Jewish people are scared. Some people are asking whether they should take the mezuzah down from their doors or not. Is this a time to sort of tone down their Jewish heritage? Rabbis, on the other hand, are saying, listen, no, 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 now it's the time to sort of celebrate your Jewish heritage. It's, it's time to celebrate it, to embrace it. How do you do that? Because you have to be vigilant at a time like this. You have to protect yourself and your family at this really difficult time. How do you do both? Well, Zane, first of all, you raise a really important point, which is that that story that came from Los Angeles, that uh, that intruder uh, that that was screaming anti-Semitic sayings that that was threatening to uh, to kill the family uh, that would have been in a normal time that would be the story that we're still talking about today we would still be trying to get our arms around how that can happen and without you reminding us it's just one more in a I long know. list yeah, it's horrible and so. So there, yeah, there is there is definitely more that we have to do. Um, it is important to be proud Jews, but until we see the kind of leadership that we need from government leaders, from university leaders, from business leaders, that set a tone that says that that anti-Semitic rhetoric is is simply unacceptable on university campuses. It violates the codes of conduct, and if people violate those codes of conduct then there should be consequences. And when the, when the violations are serious, they should be expelled. This isn't about, uh, this isn't about free speech. This is about setting a, a tone for a campus, for a business and for the country that says, this is just unacceptable. There are people walking around uh, in cities across America, 
tearing down the posters of people who are being held hostage by Hamas in tunnels, babies, kids, women. Think about that. Think about the fact that if people were walking down the street, as happens routinely, and they see an image, they see someone who posted a, a, an image of their pet that is missing, they would stop, they would take it in, they would feel bad. But somehow we've reached the point where people walk down the street and see the the faces of hostages being held by terrorists oh and tear them down as some sort of statement. That's that's what we have to combat. We need to be proud Jews. That is yeah. what I believe. It's what AJC believes. But we also have to be vigilant and we have to we have to expect leadership across our country and across the world. Ted, those people tearing down those posters have no shame. And I, I, I will just say this, something is wrong with them. They are lacking something that, that is so deep inside of them that uh, it, it is despicable to see those images of the posters being torn down. You know, what also is despicable is having to wake up this morning like I did to a, a picture that my stepson, who is studying abroad in Madrid, sent me of a swastika that he walked by on his way to campus uh, this morning. And, you know, I, I would hate that this is sort of our quote unquote new normal. I know you're focused mainly on the U.S., but uh, what are your interactions like with your colleagues who are also trying to tackle this scourge uh, abroad? No, I, actually, uh, AJC has offices around the world. I was just recently in Berlin in our in our Berlin office where we met with uh, we met with the chancellor of Germany and and expressed uh, and, and told him about the meeting that we had with Jewish students in Germany who in 2023 uh, walk across their campuses as people scream gas the Jews at them. The same thing is true uh, we're seeing across Europe. Our office, our European office in Paris uh, is is being told the same thing. I was on a uh, I was on a call with leaders of the South African Jewish community just the other day. The same kinds of outrageous statements. The the fact uh, and this is not this is not just about the Jews when society allows someone to scream kill anybody, let alone kill the Jews, kill anyone, the collective outrage would be so, should be so great, it should be all anyone is talking about. And yet, somehow it's different in the eyes of, of too many people because it's the Jewish community. And I say this, and Bianca, you know this, I say this not, not to, uh, not out of some sense of of despair at this moment, but because the Jewish community, unfortunately, has has dealt with anti-Semitism for millennia, and we know what happens when people don't call it out. It's too often led to pogroms, pogroms in Russia that caused my grandparents to leave Russia, and the near pogrom like the one in Dagestan, where there was a, a group looking to massacre Jews. Mm -hmm. Pogroms like the one, the massacre that happened in Israel. We've seen what happens when people get the Jews get expelled from countries. And the worst case, the near extermination, the attempted extermination of the mm -hmm. Jewish people by the Nazis, that that's what we bring to bear. That's why this is all so, so painful for us. And it's why why demanding the collective outrage from the world is just not too much for us to be asking at this point. And it's the fact that it was the massacre of 1,400 Jews. It was the massacre of Jews that brought out anti-Semitism across the world. That is what that is what gets me. But Ted Deutsch, we have to leave it there. Thank, thank you, you for so what you're much. doing, Ted. There's a real sense of vulnerability amongst thank Jews around the world. So thank, thank you. you so much for being thank a voice. You.